Okay, so in this video, we're just going to discuss um, the class of separable differential equations. And um, these are any equation of the form of this red box here. Um, and the reason they're called separable will become clear in a moment. Um, but we do this because separable differential equations, um, we make a definition for separable differential equations because we have a very, very uh, straightforward and simple way to solve them. In fact, one really only needs uh, the very basics of integration and, and differentiation to, to solve them. Um, and in fact, the procedure is very simple. So to solve uh, such a DE, What we do is the following. Uh, we firstly, we just uh, shift everything involving x to one side of the equation and everything involving y to the other side. And then what we'll have is a, an expression involving only y and dy on one side and an expression involving only x and dx on the other. And so what we do then is integrate both sides. Of the equation, so we, int we um, integrate both sides of the equation. And then, once that's done, we'll have an expression involving y equal to an expression involving x, and then we can just simply solve for x. Oh, sorry, solve for y, um, if it is possible to do so. Okay, so this is the procedure, and now let's look at this applied to a simple example. So the example we'll look at is the following one. Um, we want to solve the DE given by dy dx equal to um, 2xy. Um, so solve this DE over the interval. And what is the interval? In this case, we're going to solve it over the entire real line. Um, okay, so to solve this, let's apply the first rule, which we remember here is to um, separate the equation. So that is to put everything involving uh, y to one side and everything involving x uh, to the other. So if dy dx equals 2xy, then from that we can divide by y and multiply by dx and get that... Uh, 1 over y dy is just going to be equal to um, uh, 2x dx. And we just made a, an assumption here, by the way, which is important. Uh, we assume that y is not constantly, it's not, not 0 over this uh, interval, but okay, we can, we can revisit that just now. Um, so we, we just have to keep this in mind, y, y is not equal to zero um, on, on this interval. Making this assumption over this interval is, is the same as this, okay. So now um, we integrate both sides. Uh, so we, we take this equation here and um, we're going to integrate both sides. So we're going to say that the integral of one is equal to the integral of the other. If two expressions are equal, then certainly their the integrals should be equal. So we have this. And this will immediately give us, so the integral of 1 over y dy is natural log of the absolute value of y. And um, uh, there should be an arbitrary constant. There's always a constant of in integration. Um, but we leave it out for a second. Um, and then here we'll have that this is equal to, of course, x squared plus an arbitrary constant. Okay, so what to do about these arbitrary constants? Well. Suppose I had put the c here and then I put another d here just for the arbitrary constants. Then we could have always shifted this over to get d minus c on the one side, but then remember what these represent. These d and the c are arbitrary constants. 
And so, of course, this is also going to be an arbitrary constant so that we can just um, put C here. Okay, so this is now the point where we have an expression of involving only Y equal to expression involving only X, and so now we're in a position to solve for, um, for Y. So if natural log of Y, absolute value Y, is equal to X squared plus C, then this is the same thing as to say that uh, E, if I, take, if I raise E to both sides here, I'm going to get E natural log Y is um, equal to e to the x squared plus c. And this here uh, just means that the absolute value of y is equal to, um, yeah, the same thing, e to the x squared plus c. And uh, one can you do a bit of algebra here to say that this is just e to the power of c times e to the power of x squared. OK. So. We know that if y is any function which is not zero over this interval and it's differentiable, then it needs to satisfy this uh, equation. That's what we are uh, guaranteed over here. And uh, the rest is of what we need to do is, um, is really just trying to understand what does this mean. So for instance, e to the power of an arbitrary constant is really just a positive arbitrary constant. But then, so let's write that out. Let's let's be a bit more clear with that. Um, if I take, if I remember, this c here is an arbitrary constant. It means it can it represents really any number. But then e to the power of any number is just e. Uh, it's just any strictly positive number. Okay. So we know that um, w absolute value y is just equal to some k times e to the power of x squared, where k is strictly bigger than zero. And that's the, the real only reason for that is just what I've said. I'll repeat it, which is that uh, c is any number, and e to the power of c is then just any positive number. OK. Now, absolute value of y equal to um, uh, a positive number. So if k is a positive number, remember, this is going to be a strictly positive number if k is positive. So then the absolute value of y being equal to a positive number means that y is equal to either exactly this, yeah, uh, for k positive, or it's negative. For... Um, k is strictly bigger than 0. OK. Um, now we have uh, found something. So in fact, uh, if k is any positive number, let's ask ourselves, what can um, these values be? Well, these can just be any non-zero number. If k is positive, any positive number, then any non-zero non number can be obtained um, by either negative k or k. Okay. So what does this mean? It means that y is actually going to be equal to uh, k e to the x. So all that I'm doing is just summarizing uh, what we get from, from this part onwards, right? So it's just a little bit of um, uh, writing everything a bit more succinctly. So here, uh, y is equal to k times e to the x squared as long as k is not equal to 0. OK, good. And now we just have to check, Does is our uh, condition satisfied? Well, yes, it is. If k is not equal to 0, then uh, k times e to the x squared is not equal to 0. And so um, uh, everything is fine. Everything is good. But now we have to check, what about if k is equal? What about the 0 solution, right? What about if k is equal to 0? Um, and we can see then that if we take y equal to 0, it's, it's very easy, really, to see that if y is equal to 0, um, then then th this equation will hold over here. If you differentiate 0, you'll get 0 on the left-hand side. And um, 
then 2x times 0 is just going to be 0. So even y equal to 0 satisfies this equation. So that uh, the uh, solution to the entire differential equation really is just given by uh, y is equal to k times e to the x squared. Okay, for k any number. Okay. So uh, just to remember, we have solved now um, the function, we have solved this differential equation using a, a technique called separation, um, uh, separable differential equation. We've solved this differential equation using this, um, this technique here. Uh, now, there is, you can immediately see what is general about this technique. Um, what is general is that we're always going to, using this technique, and get um, uh, some expression involving y equal to some expression involving x. And then we integrate both sides and solve for y where possible. And um, often, uh, often what we get from that is um, uh, quite a complex thing. So for instance, this here is quite a complex um, to try and work out what y is is quite complex here. But after enough calculation, we can see that y is just equal to this, which is fairly simple. Okay, thank you.